My people came here more than 200 years ago. New England had become too crowded for old Silas and Lois Tinker, so they headed to the Connecticut Western Reserve, a new state called Ohio. He settled on the South Ridge, west of Kingsville, farmed there until he died in 1839. He left behind a large family, at least nine children. Sylvester, my grandfather, and his wife Sally had two boys, Sylvester Jr. and William Sr. Like most of us tinkers, the boys had a mechanical mind about them. They could look at a piece of machinery and figure out what made it work, as well as how to fabricate every part in the thing. I guess we were engineers without the fancy degree. I suppose that's why this valley along the Conneaut Creek was of such intense interest to my people. There was water power, hardwood forest, stone, and bog iron here. In the 1830s, they started building their foundry and machine shop in a spot that would become known as Tinker Hollow. Does that send a shiver up your spine? A lot of folks in Ashtabula County associate Tinker Hollow with ghosts, murders, suicides, and legends. I, Julius Tinker, would much rather you associate it with industry and the settlement of this county. Four generations of Tinkers labored and sweated in this valley for nearly 90 years, making household and farming items of iron and wood. Why, we help the folks of this region feed themselves and their livestock and help them fight the Civil War. Had my father and uncle been better about filing patents for our inventions, we might have been just as famous as Cyrus McCormick. Oh well, that's water under the bridge. Our machine shop ran on that water power, stored in a dam on Conneaut Creek. If you look closely upstream, you can still see a little section of the dam wall. That and the muscle of man and beast were all that we had to power our industry. The 20 to 30 men who worked for me and my son William made stoves, skillets, gears, steam engines, and a pepper mill threshing machine. Why, we even built a mowing machine that cost $125 in gold. It's unfortunate none of them survived. I would like to be able to show you how they worked. But all we have left are stories, legends, and patterns. These patterns were the blueprints of our products, a set of instructions for the molten metal that would be poured into the impression of the pattern left behind in molding sand. Bolts, handles, blades, and dozens of nondescript parts we cast every one of them here in this valley. I like to think of these patterns as the books we wrote, the pictures we painted. Some say they are industrial sculptures in wood, and I think that's a pretty accurate description. My son William cast the last part in this foundry back around 1928, a few months before I died. As with all the other castings we made, William added a secret ingredient to the pig iron at precisely the right moment. 
It's too bad he never thought to write down the tinker's secret for making cast iron as hard as steel, but the fact he didn't just adds to the speculation and mystery about this place. Some nights I like to wander along this old stream and recall the smells of charcoal, molten iron, and human sweat. The sound of the water wheel whirling and canvas belts slapping. And if you listen closely, you too will hear it between the rippling water and tree frogs chorus. And don't be surprised if you see my reflection in these dark waters, or hear me hobbling across the old bridge. After all, this is Tinker Hollow, a place of legend and myths. <laughs>